some good ideas are so simple that you have to wonder why it took so long to get out into the world. That was my first thought when playing through Descenders, a downhill mountain biking game with procedurally generated worlds and random objectives. It's basically that PlayStation 2 game Downhill Domination meets Spelunky, a combination that works so well that I wouldn't be surprised to see Electronic Arts and other major developers rip off the idea for their own extreme sports franchises. Hang on tight, because the goal of this game is to get to the bottom of the mountain in one piece. This is a unique racer where the focus isn't on fighting off the competition or even coming in first, but rather surviving the narrow courses long enough to make it to the finish line. These are short tracks, they're randomly constructed, giving you a completely different experience every time you turn it on. Of course, there's more to Descenders than just getting to the bottom of the mountain. You start out each session with four lives, which means that you can withstand crashing a few times before the game ends and kicks you back out to the lobby. The trick is to complete the optional missions in each stage to earn a much needed extra life. These missions include everything from completing the race without breaking, performing a certain amount of backflips, getting six seconds of air time, and so on and so forth. You're going to want to rack up as many of these extra lives as possible in order to take on the boss jump and move on to the next challenging terrain. Now, Descenders is split into eight different locations, taking us to the jungle, desert, snowy mountains, and even down through a village. It's not just a nice mix of terrains, but also a way for the game to introduce new obstacles and stunt jumps in each location. Best of all, you'll be able to unlock all eight of these terrains by completing the boss challenges. And since each map has dozens of events to tackle, you'll be tempted to just go around completing missions and stocking up on extra lives. But here's the kicker, you can't spend too much time in one spot, because the sun will start to set in each location and eventually it becomes hard to see. It'll get to the point where you're biking down the mountain in the middle of the night with only the moonlight to guide you. What I really like is how the procedurally generated tracks don't feel random. In fact, you don't even have to stay on the track. This is an open world you're racing in, so if you can think you can shave off a few seconds by cutting through the trees and going off-road, then you're free to run each event as you see fit. And since you're rarely timed, you can literally pedal back up the mountain in order to finish the randomly assigned missions. You can take most of these events at your own pace, which definitely sets this apart from most racing games. Another thing that sets each playthrough apart is how you can hire crew members that'll give your rider some extra perks. You'll gain points by going fast and pulling off six stunts, which you can use to improve your steering, widen the tracks, increase the amount of stunts, pull off flip tricks faster, and other useful abilities. These will stick around throughout the session, but will go away the moment you run out of lives and have to start over. Thankfully, you'll earn a lot of extra bikes, helmets, goggles, shirts, accessories, and more from each session. So there really is a lot of incentive to just keep on playing. It helps that the gameplay feels right. There isn't a whole lot to the riding, but the handling is tight, and the only times I felt out of control is when I was headed straight down the steepest mountains. The only problem I have with the gameplay is that there aren't enough tricks to pull off. You can do some basic flips and 360s, but all the trick stuff feels like it was tacked on at the last second. It would have been fun to see this part of the game fleshed out more, especially since there are entire events dedicated to tricking. Speaking of complaints, there's a repetition to the event types that started to get to me after a while. While it's always fun to speed down the mountain, I wish the Descenders would have a little bit more variety. So much of it can be summed up as little more than surviving until the end. It would have been nice to race computer opponents or try to compete for points. There also needs to be a few more objectives, because you can go three or four games in a row with the goal of completing each stage without breaking. This concept has so much potential, but some of the limitations hold the game back. I have other nitpicks, like how you can't customize your character or buy different gear. The killer concept only gets Descenders so far, and it's clear that there's still a lot more they can do with this idea. But even if it's occasionally repetitive and doesn't offer some of the most popular race types, I was still impressed with the amount of varied locations, the colorful graphics, and the tight gameplay. 
This is a game that manages to breathe new life into the extreme sports genre. Oh well, being the best biking simulator in years. If this is just the first attempt, then I can't wait to see what the Descender sequels are gonna look like. A simple twist on the formula has turned Descenders into one of the most addictive extreme sports games on the market today. Fast paced and always thrilling, this randomly generated racer offers a wide variety of cool locations, tons of events, plenty of perks, all kinds of accessories to unlock, and tight controls that'll keep you on that narrow path. It's occasionally repetitive, and I wish there was more to the trick system, but Descenders is a triumph that gives us an inventive new take on the racing genre. This is easily the best downhill mountain biking game since Downhill Domination. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now here's the question I have for you. What's your favorite extreme sports game? I'm just gonna let you decide what qualifies as extreme sports. But I'd probably go with uh, SSX3. I definitely wouldn't be opposed to EA doing something similar with the SSX series, especially with all those tricks. Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, I'm currently hard at work on A Plague Tale and Coral. We have a lot of reviews going up next week, so I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.